TikTok. And we're live. <laughs> Boops. There mm. is life coming from the stream. It is time for traditional <laughs> Linux Wednesday stuff. <laughs> and I Hi, forgot Karen. to send out the tweet. Yeah. Don't worry, mine will go out in two minutes. You can retweet it. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and then I'll retweet it. <laughs> Let's What's just do a quick one. Oh man, I put love and care into mine. I think I don't remember <laughs> what I wrote, but it was pretty loving. <laughs> Let's see. We're live. One day I'll remember to do these beforehand. You wordsmith. You tug at my heartstring. <laughs> Aww. What's going on, everyone? Mm -hmm. We're getting ready for another weekly daily Wednesdays. We were discussing fantastic, exciting things a minute ago, like showers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all lined up. So let's kick it over to the live show. Oop, there we go. Okay. You got it? Yes. <laughs> People are going to be drawn into there your writing. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's great. So good. And yours just went out just after mine. <laughs> Science, baby. <laughs> Hello, Linda. Sob. <laughs> yeah. I didn't remember to do the one on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, man. I don't know what to say about Facebook sometimes. It was like two weeks after they removed the option from the main page to schedule a post. Mm -hmm. I think they realized that no one knew how to schedule a post anymore. So they had a little pop-up like, by the way, we've moved this over to publishing. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> T-I-L. <laughs> Hello, Internet. We are live for LWW episode 200. <laughs> Hello, Shay. <laughs> What's that on the right side? Oh, is that chat? Maybe? Yeah. It's terrifying. It's <laughs> chat. <laughs> there it and is. apparently I left a lot of people hanging yesterday at the end of the stream. Really? <laughs> after I died. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I saw, just like, at least two people. It's like, no! Oh, come on! <laughs> Spoilers! I don't know. <laughs> I had it up, um... Yeah, I had it up in the kitchen when I was... Because you were on about the sword. And I typed something, and it came back. Probably 20, 25 minutes later. Still talking about that sword. <laughs> I was like, jeez, <laughs> that must be an awesome sword. Uh -huh. It is. It's the Chris Amare. It's a, a unique sword in the Elder Scrolls lore. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, Shay. That's I, I. The Twitch app is really good about that. When we cast it to our TV, it's nice to have the. It's nice to have the chat there on the side. Yeah, and the Amazon. You've got the Amazon TV. I finally found the um, Twitch hmm. chat that doesn't like. Sp not Twitch chat, the uh, Twitch app on Android, because I backed it up on, um, ah, what's it called? Android backup. Uh, Titanium? Yes, thank you. So, I was going to say <laughs> requires root, that one. Um, <laughs> before they made the change to where you couldn't pull it down with a swipe. Oh. Mm. To where you have to like tap it, then it shows a little down arrow. Then you tap the down arrow. Then then you can swipe like that. Why did you change the UI? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's annoying. I've been using a third party app, uh, Extras, which is nice, but it doesn't have pop outs yet for the video. But it's supposed to soon. Oh, uh, I'm really... going to share my opinion about pop outs in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a thing. Hello, Ryan Pool sixty four, and welcome. Does that new demo have a Linux version? Probably not. Linux. The original one did, which was nice. <laughs> it 
It's a little stretched out, being honest. Uh, it's coming soon on Steam. Mm. It does say Linux at the bottom in the system requirements, so. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Banner, Dragon Ball Why would you do that, Shay? You'll break your TV. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. My face is now uh, permanently seared onto someone's TV who left the um, playlist of Linux Gamecast just running, mm -hmm. went away, came back six hours later, and the TV was frozen on my face. Wow. <laughs> and now when they turn off the TV, my uh, face glows in the dark. <laughs> At least they didn't have, well, they'll teach them to buy OLED. <laughs> Actual burning. <laughs> Yay, Art Theron, Sorceress, and Shay, look at my shirt. This is a really cool one. This one says, Obey Your Master. This is this is from the 90s, 1998. <laughs> it's one of my vintage Linux shirts. Master! <laughs> master! <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the this is the very first shirt I wore at scale. <laughs> Yeah, no, no longer available. This, all these shirts from the '90s, the, those companies are no longer around anymore. Like the Linux Mall and the Linux Store. Um, Penguin Compu Computing is still around, but they don't make the shirts anymore. Oh my God, Arthur, and that shirt's one year younger. <laughs> my shirt's one year younger than you. <laughs> yeah, my little brother was born in 1998. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Babies. <laughs> Ooh. I will be right back. I need to use the restroom. Hello, <laughs> <Ooh>, Pennywise. <laughs> this is this has got like a casino zone sonic vibe. Sup, clown? Could also be like a background music for a fighting game. Possibly. I could see that. Yeah. Well, that. I've sounds... been following that game religiously almost, Arthurin. <laughs> oh, that one? That was the. Yeah, <laughs> right. Is that ever coming out? Uh. Supposedly, this year. Isn't that what they said last year? <laughs> no. <laughs> they always said 2020. <laughs> That's, uh, was that Unity or UE? Yeah, it was Unity, wasn't it? Unity, yeah. yeah. Q1 2020, yeah. The Dark Souls of Darksiders. <laughs> Is it Darksiders 3? No. Strider? <laughs> He's talking about Darkest Dungeons. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. There's so many games. I actually uh, went through my uh, Steam library. Just to, you know, have a bit of a refresher on the games I have. And I was going through it. Wow, I have a bunch of games that start with Dark. So many games that start with Dark. <laughs> Yes, it is, Ryan. <laughs> hey, Strider, did you order your USB switch? They're awesome. Got one on the desk. Do you need to plug a mouse and a keyboard into two different computers? <laughs> yeah, you unplug your mouse and your keyboard from a computer. You plug it into that, and then you plug one end of the USB to one computer and the other one yep. to the other. There, done. <laughs> Anytime you see me... Reach over there, that's what I'm doing. Switching between these two boxes. That's a that's a life hack. That's a budget keyboard mouse switch is what that is. Yeah. I have now finished uh all three Dark Souls games. Not counting the remaster, but uh that's going to be first streams later on no. um but yeah i've now beaten all three dark souls on linux do you know what i'm thinking about breaking out this friday mm. half-life black mesa oh yeah 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the beta for Ascend is now out. Yeah. yeah. I've never <laughs> been through Half Life outside of like, you know, I've never. Just like maybe the first 30 minutes of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, then again, I didn't finish Half Life 2 until like barely two years ago. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's what everyone's pissed off about. I. I <laughs> I get it. Was it was good to have that moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I get it. I have, like, the outside perspective of uh, having someone, like, much later on actually go through that and see, oh, yeah. fuck, really? I, I was doing the IRL XKCD on that one, baby. Uh, <laughs> so. But the cake I, is a lie. The cake is a lie. It's like, that was a thing in, you know, 2008. <laughs> I, I did get. The entirety of my Half-Life 2 playthrough was done at UHD, so... Who was that? Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting on. After friends stop bothering me with playing... I don't know what Raft is. Oh, the um, survival game that you're on a raft, and you have to, like, pick up stuff from the ocean and uh, avoid the sharks. That genuinely sounds like something I would have made up, but okay. <laughs> no, that, that is the core gameplay loop. It's uh, you're on a raft and you have to make sure it stays afloat and you have enough like food to survive. And yeah, then sharks come and destroy your raft and try to eat you. <laughs> is it like asymmetrical multiplayer? Can somebody be the shark? No. <laughs> Can it be a cloud? <laughs> Not entirely sure it has spectator mode, no. Nah, uh, <laughs> uh, man. I, I'm going to be like a smitey deck cloud, you know? Rain of people. <laughs> Lightning! Just, just that one little thing of water. Like, that's me. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go nuke some tea, then we're going to get into it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> So, Mere PC, did you know that Steve was in the after show last Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> he made an appearance <laughs> and got to talk to everyone. He hadn't talked to, boy, he hadn't talked to you guys since Scale. <laughs> I think Scale. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> other than Chad, of course. <laughs> Yeah, Steve. Well, Steve, Steve is, is still on vacation, so we may see a wild Steve like run in, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moon the camera, po and then run back out. <laughs> Possibly, although he's frantically uh, finishing his his model, uh, which he's almost done with, but he's got to turn it in today. So, <laughs> all right, go okay, yeah. <laughs> so we we may not this time. <laughs> oh, Nori is way too cozy uh, in bed right now. Aww. <laughs> She's like, ooh, I have an excuse to go to the bedroom and be in bed and cozy this whole time without you saying anything. It's like, all right. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, she, it looks amazing in real life. It looks really amazing. <laughs> oh, there it is. Not wearing the onesie, no, but uh, yes, definitely mm -hmm. rocking like the massive polar pajamas. It's like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, fair. The temperatures here have been around like three Celsius. So yeah. All right. <laughs> Is it snowing, Pedro? Nope. And no. It's been, okay. uh, the, the weather has been relatively clear. It was a bit cloudy yesterday, but mm. it's, um, yeah, it hasn't rained. For a couple of days, so yeah. <laughs> mm, okay, just real cold. <laughs> I hope it gets what? like really snowy for like Monday and Tuesday before Christmas, so I don't have to go to work. <laughs> oh yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I like really actually snow, like a good twenty centimeters of snow. It's like everything stops. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool, Mere PC. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing lots of onesies on AliExpress, real inexpensive. Just have to wait 
<laughs> three or four months for them <laughs> sometimes yep sometimes <laughs> sometimes you get stuff in like a couple weeks it's amazing <laughs> yeah it's usually if they have a big batch coming out they'll send it as soon as it goes but yeah they're usually like wait till they have a bunch of things to send in one batch yeah <laughs> that's why it takes so long yeah <laughs> But yeah, no, though that onesie I bought, Nori, that that was expensive. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Had to buy it from Amazon UK and send it to Portugal. It's uh, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and our Theron today's m mug is uh, last year's Hail Santa, the one that isn't correct, <laughs> the one that was misprinted. <laughs> <laughs> That's a collector's item, Jill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about those from last year's vintage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> mm, tea. That doesn't taste like dirt. Hey, Steve. You're home. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> you still playing with your bowl? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Playing with not BB-8? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the Frankenfile mug is Franken -file. cool too. Uh, Fra Frank-o-file. And it's right... Oh, you can't see. Frank, it's you behind that? the head. I heard it's that. <laughs> I, know, I said it wrong. <laughs> The Franco file mug is you, behind you Hell behind Elks. He's scrawling at you, man. That's oh. <laughs> <laughs> he does that when he gets excited. But I'll have to order the new Hell Elks mug and the and the Use Me mug because I don't have the Penguin <laughs> Use Me yet. <laughs> I like how we have a T-shirt. It's that totally based on a garbage can, but. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> I should probably start wearing some of them. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a real collector. I keep them in the original packaging. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're actually one of the shirts I have two of. I still have in the package. I have them all. Oh. <laughs> yes, I have most of them. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> then you need to wear the use me one. That's like, that's <laughs> use me penguin. Oh, if you're going to be using that insignia, you just need to make Daleks, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some tea? <laughs> I'd like to take confirmed. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, one of the recurring uh, ones we haven't seen in the um, new Doctor. Hmm. New season's coming up, so maybe that'll yes. happen. <laughs> what will? What? Daleks. Last again. episode of last series. <laughs> was Dalek. It was Dalek. Yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's just a Dalek. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It has. <laughs> Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mira. <laughs> We've been over this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, actually. <laughs> like a Leonard French style paddle, just with the names of people you're going by. <laughs> the problem with the LEDs is, okay, first off, chaos and mayhem, but... There's enough chaos monkey in me where I'm like, it'll be fun. Let's see what we can do. I'll wire that up for the internet. Horrible idea. So you need two is what you're saying. Yeah, well, it's like I'm kind of down with that. But like I, I broke Amazon in half looking for one that didn't require Windows software to set up. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking about is this. What do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are great for restaurant. They use those Neon, at restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you use like fluorescent chalk paint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was actually, I was going to suggest that, Vin, because that's a, 
I'm, that's, those are really great. And they're pretty. <laughs> yeah, Tesco's is selling those uh, magic boards, but they're the teeny tiny ones. <laughs> they got small ones. That one is 32 by 24 freedom units. So it's roughly yeah. the same size as, um, mm, hi, hi, Nick. Is <laughs> Nick. And, mm, how you doing, Linus? Uh, so I could, uh, this is going to require me doing work. So I can expand yeah. <laughs> these two out and keep it like right behind me so it will always be in shot. That's what I'm thinking. I'm very much open to suggestions. And I know there's a, you can buy a screen with a thing with a Raspberry Pi is I can't find like a lightweight screen to hang. I don't want to have a TV. Oh, something heavy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah, laptop panels. They make those uh, converter or inverters for the uh, laptop LCDs. I mean, I at least want it to be that big. Oh. <laughs> so you can see it. <laughs> I like the idea of LEDs because then it can just constantly mm -hmm. run. Yeah. And decide on anything. Like most things. If it's something I'm... It took me two weeks to buy network cards, people. Come on. How long do you think this is going to take? All right, Chibs, what do you got? <laughs> are you gonna fly? Are you going to fly out to Athens every week and, like... Oh. Flipboards. <laughs> I'd be down with that. <laughs> Run a puppet show in the background. <laughs> be awesome, man. <laughs> the kids, they love it. Then we'd have to like, ah, oh, don't start on YouTube. <laughs> then we'd be subject to cop. Yeah, up. right. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. LCD screens. Yeah, it would be neat, like to you know how you can, you can get. I I have one of the little Raspberry Pi screens. It's just the screen on the circuit board, and it's real light. Mm. And I've seen bigger ones of those, but I haven't seen huge ones. But I'm sure someone makes them. We're gonna need uh, yeah, seven and twelve. I'm looking for something if we're doing freedom units. Uh, hang on. I measured this with my freedom tape. Ah. <laughs> <Was it? laughs> uh, minimum eight tall and 40 wide. Oh, okay. Would be the requirements because then mm -hmm. I could take these, drop this down and have it go across the have top. Have it there. Right. Nice. Yeah. We're, we're kind of dealing with like what I can do with this wall back here, which yeah. there's a lot more wall especially on this side, because it kind of zoomed into this area, because it would look funny if I was just sitting in the middle. I'm like, why is that built around? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, give me some ideas. I, I don't want to get too arts mm. and crafts with it. This is another thing. But... <laughs> Like, I'm not against <laughs> soldering something, but we'd like to keep that to a minimum. I'll send it to Pedro, make sure it gets done right. <laughs> <laughs> Mine can be a bit smaller. It just needs to take up this wall here. <laughs> <sighs> no, we're not going down. Well, we could. <laughs> I still got to get you some foam panels. I keep meaning to do that. I think last time I tried to gift you something on Amazon UK, it wouldn't let me. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> okay. Uh, there are some <laughs> things that uh, when I went to look at Jill's um, wish list and Strider's wish list, it's like, oh, I can't get this, I can't get this, I can't get this. Well, you guys get what I can get you. It's like, there. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I don't know if it's the phone panels or some something... It's just like, no, you can't do this. You can buy this. And I'm like, no, I want to gift it. And it's like, you can't get it. Mm, there are some items mm. like that, yeah. Which makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think those are usually third-party sellers that don't want to send to, like, unconfirmed addresses or something. 12-inch. <laughs> Hello, Linux Ganeru. <laughs> He's in our live... Discord feed? 
GNU. <laughs> Let's do a coffee. Yeah, well, they block video. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, we'd like to keep our um, monthly bill down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> it's not that you just don't want to blow out all your bandwidth because you think about like you've got four or five people watching YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's huh. like constant. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's do a show. Yes. Okay. We hit record. It's not cold outside. It's like 12 degrees. <laughs> Zero? <laughs> To, uh, it would be like 12, like, oh, it's warm, but it got up to 21 the other day. It's like, geez. Oh, no, sorry. It's six. Mm. It's six Celsius outside. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's doable. <laughs> Round two, and it's like, burr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, locked and loaded. We have four tracks of Fury. <laughs> Ready to go and being recorded. That rhymed. Ha! Deal with it. <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Where we can sit back, Yay! relax, take that midweek break, and talk about all the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. Hi, mm -hmm. everyone. I'm Vin Stone. Hello. That person <laughs> was Jill Bryant. <laughs> and the silent, shadowy, mysterious figure in the corner is one Pedro. <laughs> Matthias. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Pedro, man. Um, together with you. Hey, everyone watching this live, kind of being brilliant. Um, wow, we got a lot of stuff to cover this week, right? Yeah. Mm, yes. Th th this one's a chunky one. That's a <laughs> yeah. chunky one, dude. <laughs> looking forward to it. It is our 200th episode, Joe. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Make sure to point that out. That's that's exciting. <laughs> I don't have my Patrick Stewart acting gift handy, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's just an amazing 200. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I, I, I've been here for the last half of that 200. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, was Jill's lead in. Uh, no, what have you been no, doing, Jill? No, Come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at a big I was looking in chat at Squirrel. the number two on yellow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I got that distracted. Okay. So yeah, it's our two hundredth episode of LWW. And one of the cool things is I finally got my new three monitor gaming and broadcasting setup finished over the weekend. Uh before I had three thirty inch monitors spanning landscape and now i have my newest 43 inch ultra hd monitor paired with two of my previous 30 inch monitors in portrait on either side and i'm so happy with how it turned out it's it's really great for doing this show and and um, everything i need for broadcasting and it was really awesome playing portal 2 on it at 6000 by 2160 resolution so I was pretty happy with that. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> the highest res I've ever played Portal. <laughs> right on, right on. Uh, not a lot going on here. I did get curious because I was always looking for a way to save a buck. About, this is, consider this a public service announcement. If you see any network cards on eBay, then they're like, why are these like multi-port network cards? They're great. They're even low profile. Four ports, $8. I should buy, don't. Um, <laughs> ultimately because they're going to be Rev 1.0 or Rev 1.0 A of PCIe, which looks the mm. same. It'll fit. Just probably not going to work unless you've got some older <laughs> hardware. When I say older hardware, I have like some Optiplex 3010s. These are not spring chickens. It doesn't work. Because <laughs> I, I went and dug out one of my Sun Ultra 24s, which has a four port, uh, just an ATLS S1Q. And I was like, do you work in here? Nope. Do you work in here? Do you work in the Threadripper? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha LOL, no. And I tried it in the uh, Ryzen on the audio box. Nope. So I finally paid the iron price for some 10G tech network cards. That's going to sort some, uh, since we're doing everything over uh, VoIP, 
do you call it VoIP data bits over the network? All of our audio stuff? I don't know. It's crazy engineering. It's I mean, it science. is technically voice over IP. Right. So, yes. Audio yeah. Over IP. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Let's just call it <laughs> Gary. Pedro, you didn't write anything. Shame on you. No, because there's really not been much going on. Uh, work That's great. Is, yeah, so, it's... let me tell me about space and meeting. Well, uh, one of the developers at GNOME had uh, <laughs> an issue with the definition of um, the term platform. And uh, I saw this article and it's like, oh, there is no, quote, Dude. Linux, end quote, platform. Dude, Pedro, <laughs> okay. okay, think about it. Think about this. Because we all make it a point when we see, like, if you look on the back of packaging and you see the little penguin thing. Mm-hmm. You're like, yay, that's awesome. You know, I saw it like in some little Vantec Dax game, and I was like, oh, look at that. that what if you saw quotes around that? <laughs> what are you implying exactly? <laughs> yes. Uh, and it's like, I saw the title, that was the title of the article. It's like, oh, oh, that's as clickbaity as I've ever seen. And he goes on to debate that uh, in his definition, a platform is an operating system, a developer platform, a design language, and an app store. Why those four in specific and not something else? Because this is his opinion. And, uh, well, uh, in his opinion, Linux uh, is the kernel, uh, free desktop are the standards, and then you have the distros that comprise, uh, or that could comprise, the rest of the elements in his definition of platform. And mm -hmm. he says that Ubuntu, it's, uh, as a distro, it almost fits, but in his opinion, the distro that actually fits is elementary. It's like, all right, cool, you like elementary, and you have an issue with the definition of platform. Does so he like elementary you... more than app stores? Because I see app stores bringing up, it's like, hey, how's it doing, by the way, app stores? Mm. Yeah, the, the, the app store seems to be a core uh, thing here. And Elementary does have their own app store, uh, and they do have a business model for that app store. So in his opinion, it is both Elementary and Android. Those are the two quote-unquote Linux platforms, in his opinion. But yeah, the, his sole argument here is the definition of platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. being a pedant myself, that is... Um, <laughs> Very, very pedantic of him. <laughs> Dude. All right. Um, I kind of expect this. I didn't really expect it from the gnome blog because after anyone's like real first mm -hmm. year into using Linux, like, okay, I'm using Linux. I got this. This is great. We're doing a thing. Then you're going to get like the ideas, the article, the speech of I know a way to fix Linux, you guys, mm -hmm. which I'm like, yes, I, I, I foster that. But I also foster that with like, oh, you're at that point now. That's cool, man. We, yeah. We've all been there. We have yes. 100%. It's a natural part of any Linux loving human thing. You doesn't, don't want to be humanist, but it's part of your journey. That That's a thing you're going to get. You'll get over it. Trust me. But it is sweet mm -hmm. when you see somebody. It's like, I know I, I know the solution. Like, I, I remember covering that in the 90s. And that's not any <laughs> elitism. I was like, yes, you're there, but it'll pass. Trust me. Because I don't think Linux, I mean, I agree. Linux is a kernel, right? We, we can all be like, mm -hmm. yes, okay, that's it. Uh, what is Linux? Is it distribution? Is it it's the free desktop? That's all up in the air with me. I mean, I, I don't think Linux is fragmented mm. itself. But the desktop sure is. Um, I kind of feel that. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, we will. <laughs> but I feel that that's how we like it. <laughs> yeah. you know, we like that option. We like that choice and all that stuff. And, you know, anything can become a platform if you apply enough removal of choice from it. If you lock it into <laughs> yes. a nice, perfect little cube, you're like, this is great. All the freedom in the world. We can do exactly what they tell us we can. Um, some people look for that, though. But. I kind of, I kind of feel that you're going to be grateful for all that choice and that variety, because broken record time. Desktop as a service is common. It is, mm -hmm. whether or not you it believe yeah. it, it's a thing. Yeah, it's definitely um, already here in many ways. Um, but yeah, isn't Linux the platform of choice for the cloud AI server side and everything in between? Everyone calls that a platform. <laughs> So yes, it, it, it is the Dude, you got to use free... air quotes when you say platform. 
yeah, yes. <laughs> it, is, it is the free operating system, but it's it's that it, it's it's that ability to be able to develop on and um, you know and and put everything out there uh, for the world to see. You know, in my opinion, as a platform, but. <laughs> And, you know, this wouldn't exist if it weren't for the variety and flexibility of many distros, desktops, and apps that are specialized for many different tasks, whether it be for systems on chips or supercomputers. So, yeah, Linux is a platform to me. <laughs> yeah, the, the last point I have to <laughs> offer is uh, move those quotes from Linux nope. To platform, I'm not gonna do because that's the point that you're uh, trying to make with this block. Listen, system. listen, eh? listen yeah. man. I'm from GNOME. If you keep that up, I'm removing another configuration option. <laughs> oh, great! Uh, GNOME tweak becomes even more essential. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you think? Oh, oh! You, you don't like right click, huh? Uh, no. That's kind of beautiful, man. That is one of the things. Everybody's got their thoughts, ideas, hints, and opinions about that. Yeah. That's one of the good things. We don't all have to mm -hmm. agree. You know, you can have nope. civil discourse. This is how we solve things, even though society yeah. tends to forget that. And you're like, hey, I think differently. Let's see if we can come up with something together. Yeah, to definitely. Know. Like, <laughs> no, the moment cinnamon. anyone else thinks about anything else, yes. Take two. <laughs> call like Ubuntu Cinnamon. <laughs> well, uh, yes, let's not call it mint, shall we? Because uh, this isn't mint. This is, uh, or this is a distro that is uh, trying to be an official spin of Ubuntu. But like all the other spins that are based on their um, desktop environments, this one is attempting to be, well, the official spin for Cinnamon. And you might be going... But Linux Mint is already Linux uh, is already uh, <laughs> Ubuntu based and uh, it uses Cinnamon. That's nowadays that's basically its whole selling point. Wait, we, so we can call it Cinnabuntu. <laughs> <laughs> I guess calling it Kubuntu with a C would be a little too confusing. Yeah, maybe? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> would that be wait? Could, well, would that be a little too sentimental? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good attempt at a pun there, yes, that was a good attempt. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no, this is why uh, people keep bringing up the uh, fragmentation argument, because yes, let's have another official Ubuntu spin that's basically Mint, but without, you know, all the strings that Mint attaches to their distro. Mm. Fine. All right. Bring it. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the pre-show about that. <laughs> yes. So it's uh, Ubuntu with uh, different DM instead. Does it do anything extra, though? Not right now, no. Yeah. At least not the publicly <laughs> available uh, download. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which you can download. Uh, there is a link to the uh, their, uh, SourceFor proje uh, SourceForge project page. Uh, and you can actually take it for a spin. But yeah, right now it's just Ubuntu, but with Cinnamon instead of GNOME. Yeah. Well, uh... Uh, the founder and CEO of Ubuntu Cinnamon is Joshua Pasejic, and he's been actually working really hard on making Ubuntu Cinnamon an official flavor of Ubuntu. And he's contributed a lot to the Cinnamon project, you know, for for this distro to to get it officially validated by Ubuntu and uh, Popey and Wimpy. So, and I, I've been hearing a lot about its progress on Big Daddy Linux, and I'm looking forward to thoroughly testing the new Ubuntu Cinnamon 1910. Uh, this week, actually, I'm going to be heavily testing it. <laughs> well, you don't Looking want to lightly to test it. Um... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's when you put it on a USB drive and then you look at the drive. It's like, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> really? I'm going to do a full install. Like, and... <laughs> playing with it in a VM. It's like, I've thoroughly tested it. It's like, you haven't even installed no, 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 no. it. No. <laughs> VMs don't count. Uh, yeah. <laughs> survey time. Yeah, so you can sh help shape Ubuntu's future by taking the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS survey, which is running until January 10th, 2020. Canonical wants to learn what people like about Ubuntu and how it can improve. And they would like feedback from users of Ubuntu as well as non-users alike. And they're really, one of the reasons for doing that is this is there, they, this will help them find out if there are trends in open source that they have just miss, have been missing in their distro. 
So uh, they're really interested in what the community thinks, uh, whether you're an Ubuntu user or not. And they want an honest opinion. I've already started writing answers for my survey for them. But it's one of my favorite distros. But there, there are some things I would, I would like to fix. <laughs> I would like it fixed. <laughs> yeah, to your point about uh, the trends that they may be missing. How about not entirely killing 32-bit compatibility just because? <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> That's a no nuke it canonical yeah. from orbit. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. I'm just yeah, saying. Apple did it. How's that working out for him? <laughs> hey, man, I want my 64-bit Steam client. Yeah. Also, also, yeah, I guess Valve does need a bit of a kick in the shins for that one. Chaos. <laughs> I looked at it. I mean, there's a couple of, like, you know, page one, you look at it, it's like, how much do you like Ubuntu? Which, you know, ranges from I love Ubuntu to I don't actually use Ubuntu. And, you know, uh, primary operating systems and the like. Mm -hmm. So I'm just assuming, you know, they're going to give you the option, like, bring back Mir. That was cool. You're doing yes. something different. 100% behind that. <laughs> I, I started filling this out. I'm probably not the target audience. I do have um, Ubuntu in the studio. is running Jackbox, but... It's running 18.04, so it's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Call me in a decade. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I took the survey, and I am running uh, Neon, which is uh, Ubuntu-based. But yes, much like Venn, it is 18.04-based. Um, mm. So, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> I hope they don't listen to me, because it's been demonstrated time and time again that I don't know what the hell I'm on about most of the time, so... Hey. <laughs> oh. Oh. Pitcher and Pitcher and Firefox. <laughs> yeah, so last week we talked about the newly released Firefox 71. And now with the Firefox 72 beta, you can get one of those cool features that wasn't released for Linux yet, which is a convenient picture and picture mode. So you can watch a YouTube or Netflix video pop out while browsing the web. And you can also do this through Firefox, uh, the current release Firefox 71 stable by um, enabling the picture in picture flag um, in the about conf config and under preferences. So that's really easy to do also. And yesterday I actually watched Pedro's stream open more when with it and it worked great and really nice. There, there isn't a resizing function yet for the window, but I'm sure at some point that will happen. <laughs> Sounds really neat, doesn't it? Yeah. That does. Oh, man. Yeah, it's convenient. <laughs> the future's here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, because here's been my experience. Just my experience <laughs> with Picture in Picture has been anywhere you move that, that window is the exact location you're going to need to get to in five minutes. <laughs> there, there's no way around this. There's some law <laughs> applied to whatever that window is. Then you can, oh, let's move it over. Whatever you move it to, be prepared to find something under that window. The Although the, if most of the websites, they're very vertical down the middle. So if you scooch it off to one side, you could probably get away with it. One would think. One with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then you just have to have to utilize all your monitors. That helps a lot. That's what I did. Oh, uh, Jill, I am right now. I don't have room for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I'm yeah. utilizing them. <laughs> yes. The only time I really play around with picture and picture. I mean, I've had picture and picture on uh, one of these 4K monitors, uh, like what, four or five years. Used it once, uh, used it at twice when I got a Chromecast. I was like, oh, that's neat. Okay, we'll never use that again. Um, <laughs> that's about it, man. May maybe on a tablet when I'm watching Twitch, I got something open in the yeah. window and if I'm like in mm -hmm. Google Docs or something. But that's still a cool option for people that want yeah. to have it, right? Yeah, uh, and if you uh, if you do browse the web like most people do, which is you have a YouTube video going on in the background, now you can have the video there not just the audio which is nice but uh one of the things i noticed because yeah the, the update for firefox came down a couple of days ago for for neon and, and i guess 1804 um the 
private internet access extension that I have installed is now permanently on. Mm. So I'm always on a VPN. I don't know if this is intentional or not. I'm guessing not. Uh, but I can turn it off. I can change region and it'll like disconnect me from one region, connect me to the other one. But if I try to just turn it off to just like, nope, don't use the VPN. Just do your thing regularly. Nope, can't do that. So it just really, really loves you. Apparently. Well, I did pay for the private internet access um, three-year plan, so eh, I guess yeah. I'm putting it to use one way or another. <laughs> hey, man, you got to look. I mean, you had to expect it to be a little bit of a PIA, right? Yes. Um, P-I-T-A. <laughs> Disney Plus now works in Linux after oh, DRM yay. tweaks, so they finally just <laughs> dialed it down to your standard Netflix level of DRM. So you can use your browser to watch Disney Plus. Uh, you know what? Hey, it works. I tried it and it launches. So I immediately went back to watching it on a tablet because it's 2019. Uh, that, <laughs> that's all I got to say about it. I mean, I will confirm. Yes, I, it does work and you can watch The Mandalorian. Also, if you've already cut the mouse, that streaming check, go watch the Imagineer series. That's actually really good. Because I was mm -hmm. desperately trying to find something else to justify the subscription. It's like, there's gotta be <laughs> yeah. something else on this. <laughs> and that was pretty good. I dug it. All right. Yeah, no, uh, mm -hmm. I, a big, big thank you to Disney for not being massive knobs about this. They're mm -hmm. very much appreciated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and same here. Good on you, Disney. Now your animators and developers can watch the content they create and enjoy the adorable <laughs> musings of Baby Yoda. <laughs> so he just walks around. No, it's really soup. good. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean they have you know Linux is on the desktop everywhere at Disney, so this just makes sense. And I knew they'd get around to it. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> but you do have to enable DRM in your browser. So, mm -hmm. which if you're watching yeah. Netflix or Amazon Prime, you already have. I don't know. Um, do you? Yeah. Do you, <laughs> well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm getting to a, a second thought on this. Is do you watch a like Netflix or Amazon Prime like on the piece? Which you it's, know you would think, mm -hmm. like Jill and I would, because we both have 43 inch monitors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I usually have one of the quadrants of this UHD monitor here. Mm -hmm. It's Netflix or Prime or YouTube. Mm. Th it's like the dedicated corner here. <laughs> That's neat, weirdo. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I have man. all this green real estate. I got to use it somehow. <laughs> Mine's yeah. always full, man. <laughs> That and coming in, the idea of coming in here and cutting everything on to watch something on Disney, that's not happening ever. <laughs> I mean, if I just want to watch something, yeah, I don't cut this all on. I, yeah, I use Chromebook. Chromebook or TV or something. Yeah. yeah. So that, I think that maybe is more to the point of what I'm trying to get at. Like, oh, I just want to watch something. Mm -hmm. Let's go start everything up. And But yeah, now you can have a TV box that runs Linux uh, and on top of your Netflix and your Primes, you have Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yay. Another thing you can get is OBS Studio, but I already have that bin. Here's another way to get it. Uh, there's a continuous build. It's in a little bit of a beta. There'll be a link in the show notes, as with everything else we talk about. App image for OBS, because some people are like, man, this would be real easy if I could just download an app image. You're thinking, why would I want to deal with that? Because you don't have to install a store. You don't have to get repos. You can yes. just download the app image. Yep. CH mod X, that critter, run it. And you know what? I tested it on my 10.2 Debian system. It launched. It worked. It had MDM. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it picks up on wherever your um, FFmpeg is uh, compiled with. Mm -hmm. So even if you have that uh, quick sync enabled, um, Vappy. FFmpeg with the VA API with the quick sync bits actually enabled, it'll pick up on those. Which is nice. I actually tried it on the um, one of the laptops that I have quick sync enabled just for the sake of testing it. Uh, and it's like, oh, mm. quick sync. Nice. <laughs> it's nice. I'm glad it's there. And Yay. most importantly, do not bug anyone in the OBS Discord Linux support channel about this. It is unofficial. Yes. <laughs> there. So yep. I often think if I'm in a situation to where... I have to do file management from the terminal. 
I've messed up. I've messed up, Pedro, <laughs> and I put myself in that situation, and I don't deserve a file manager. Part of my penance <laughs> is getting things sorted. But And yes, there is an argument to be made that if you've gotten to that point, maybe a little crutch wouldn't help. <laughs> it's like if you've managed <laughs> to destroy your foot, might as well grab something that'll let you walk a little bit faster. <laughs> so yeah, this is an N N or noise is not noise. <laughs> yes. And um, it is, uh, <laughs> if you really love the command line interface and uh, to the point where you actually crack open a terminal to do your file management things, this is very much a file manager that will let you do that. And it's got, it's multi-pane, obviously. It looks like it has Midnight to be Commander if, ate some Skittles. Yes, it, yes, it is very, it very colorful. It, it yeah. requires a few more um, emoji, I think. It, it is 2019 <laughs> after all. And they have a bunch of uh, plugins already. And, well, it is compatible with the noise uh, plugins. So, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's a CLI file manager. Do, yeah. Does it have a video editor? It's not Emacs uh, level yet, oh. <laughs> but you can launch a video editor from it. <laughs> yeah, you can launch a video editor from it and use it that way, or even even do Mencoder on the on the on the CLI. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> but I really like. Um, you know how fast and small it is it's only around 33 kilobytes so it's the smallest file manager you can get and yes smaller even than midnight commander which is one of my favorites as well and i i like launching i actually like launching videos uh from it um it, it will use a oh it, it it defaults to mpv but it'll use any um, default video editor you have on your system and i also enjoy uh, launching text files via gedit or less and actually you know a lot of the the low profile file managers you have to set up to auto launch to, uh, within programs and this one you don't because it has all the plugins there and that's what's really really cool about it actually <laughs> So, so what you're saying really is nice. it basically ignores all the MIME types that you have set up and uses oh, yeah. its own thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you right. can't so you know, Did you actually it. try uh, NNN? Yes. Did you <laughs> try it? Okay. Uh, does it have, because I know that Midnight mm -hmm. Commander does have mouse support, if you click on it, if you launched it through a uh, yeah, terminal no, emulator? No, no. I... Well, you know what? I've always used NNN with the arrow keys, so I've never oh, even tried okay. the mouse with it. <laughs> All <so>. right, fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm really impressed with this file manager. I've been using it for a long time, so it's one of my go-tos. In the hex. <laughs> okay. Yay! <laughs> if, if you ever catch me running like a CLI, a incursus type file manager <laughs> with X windows, take me out. Something's malfunctioned. <laughs> I'm I'll like, take that as a thing. Oh, Ven's been kidnapped. All right. Yep. That's a signal, man. That's, that's your secret message. Oh. Deep fake. Um, you don't want to be elite hacks or Ven. Yeah, I do. That's why I wouldn't have hacks open. Yeah. <laughs> LS all the things. Right? Yeah. Like if, I'm, if I'm an X, man, I'm drag and drop support. Are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> yeah. Beautiful people. Ten years ago, Linux... Yep. Just as awesome as it is right now, I'm going to be honest with you, but somebody would beg to differ. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually a really, um, you know, I thought a very well-written article. Not, can talk I don't about think it. Every... I'm going to make this picture do this. Because <laughs> okay. <I'm>, uh, <laughs> no, ah, not everything, yeah, right. <laughs> not everything is accurate in it, which Ben and Pedro will, will point out, but it has a lot of truism. And, and this is you know, this, this writer's journey, um, 10 years of using Linux. And, you know, the, the, about the challenges we faced with Linux over the last, last two years. And yes, gone are the days of insmodding sound drivers to get sound cards working and of using Windows drivers, wrappers for getting wireless internet <laughs> devices <MKS> working. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> And, you know, I think this is a great article for Linux users to read new and experienced alike to see how far Linux has come and many challenges it has faced. And, you know, look where Linux is today. We are spoiled by the most plug and play, flexible and freedom of choice OS in the world. 
And so this is this writer's uh, journey um, into the problems that he had with Linux. And some of us have, have encountered these and some of us haven't. So it's uh, definitely, you know, very well written article. And uh, Ven had a lot to say about it. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of agree with the first point that Ven's going to make uh, there because uh, as someone who had a chance to test both the NVIDIA side and the ATI side back oh, yeah. in the day, because mm -hmm. we're talking about... Hey, we uh, have about yeah, like five years, years of that ago. recorded live. So yes, yeah. <laughs> you can go back you and you guys uh, too. watch uh, Linux Gamecast <laughs> Weekly from 10 years ago. Well, not 10 years ago, but... Yeah, about five years ago or six years ago. Don't tell them about and the alternate see... timeline. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, one of the things that I do miss from uh, back then is, say you've got a brand new laptop. And the first thing I did was like, Linux, see what's working, mm -hmm. see what's not working. And I'd spend like the first two weeks actually getting everything because half of the stuff wouldn't work at all. So I'd Yay. spend like a week or two actually getting everything to work. It's like, mm -hmm. yes, I did a thing. That's... I made this all work. So I, yeah. I kind of miss that. There's yeah, definitely that's something part of the fun. said to that. Yeah. You know, I've reported multiple <laughs> times of like, I was too easy. That was kind of boring. I yeah, we're definitely at a point where there's no point in clearing off a weekend for a project. No. Those days are mm -hmm. gone. I usually get it done in like an hour. <laughs> but yeah, the first thing I'm going to take issue with is like the NVIDIA drivers a decade ago being crashy back then. Mm. Simply because they weren't. They, they were weren't. not, they, yeah. I, I they don't, were not. You, I have this mm -hmm. nasty habit of using stuff that works. That's that's what I'm <laughs> looking for. That's the word. Guess what? NVIDIA just work. You plug it in, you install the driver, you're done with it. Yes, a decade ago, that was the process right there. I'm installing NVIDIA drivers the same way I was 10 years ago from the run. From <laughs> and it's still working. Um, that said, there were probably some issues. I mean, there's probably, what do you mean probably? There's definitely issues on mobile, oh, on laptops, yeah. <laughs> but with like Optimus and all that. That's, I'll give you that one, but well, um, there's a reason that that poster exists behind you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a big fan of Nicholas Cage. Right? Oh, no, the yes. other one. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing was, it was like, well, you know, 10 years ago, Flash was horribly outdated. Man, listen, man, Flash was fully supported. This is one thing Linux had yeah. was Flash support. And that was never, there was a, no point where you couldn't watch YouTube on Linux since mm -hmm. now that said Pedro will definitely agree with me uh, a lot of flash videos had what we lovingly called smurf mode for a minute mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you could fix it by refreshing the page like oh it it it's that's the correct color All right. yeah <laughs> you can disable um hardware acceleration and flash then sometimes the smurfs would go away then you would find yourself longing for everything to be blue <laughs> and you would re-enable it so that's the thing. Gaming, that's legit. What do we have? Ten years ago, we had Humble and we had Quake clones. Really good at first-person shooters. Was Humble mm -hmm. around uh, ten years ago? Close. Yeah. Well, yeah it like might have nine. been like eight, but yeah. 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 Uh, so, I remember uh, Never Winter Nights. That was around. Mm -hmm. Never Winter Nights. I mean, there were a couple of things we could do. I get sick and tired of playing all my Loki games because that's what we had. Every now and then, like, <laughs> Linux Gaming Publishing would put out something. Desura. Desura was worth it 10 years mm. ago. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So let's see. What else do we have in this? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Virtualization. That's one thing that was brought up in this article. Virtualization. Um, using Linux as your... That's solid. That's solid. Mm -hmm. In the late 90s, I was running Windows 95 yeah, was... and VMware. Yeah. Like, that mm -hmm. was done. But hey, man, each to their own. I think it is a very cute article, and it's an interesting look. Here's what here's the value I've taken out of it. Legitimately, to me, it's an interesting look at someone who was getting into Linux for the first time ten years ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you, which is fair, yeah. No, I only started you, using Linux what fourteen years ago. <laughs> take it from that approach, and you read it like yeah. that, and you're like, okay, that's an interesting take. Uh, Coming yeah. from from like 10 years ago, I was like, well, it's already using Linux for 10 years before that. You're like, yeah, if you see it through that <laughs> lens, you're like, you kind of were missing, you're misremembering some things there. You just didn't know some things at that point. Yeah. But still, it's a good <laughs> read. Mm -hmm. I recommend it. Unlike yes. what we're about to talk about next. 
<laughs> do you have the uh, the graphic queued up? Because apparently Microsoft totally uh, hearts Linux. They do, baby. <laughs> you know it. Oh. Mm. Yay. Woo -hoo. Son, son, son. I'm bleeding for you, Microsoft. Oh. Beautiful. Tell us what you... Go away, Microsoft. See, I haven't even started. You're already getting on my nerves. Um... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Microsoft Teams is now available on Linux. This is a native port. Do you hear it? That's the entirety of Redmond laughing. No, of course not. It's, uh, what is it, Pedro? Tell me. It's Electron. <laughs> it's, it's a web it's browser. literally a Chromium window with the uh, Microsoft theme to it. That's it. <laughs> it's Teams. And it's, if you ever wanted a uh, self-contained web browser uh, in, in an application, boy, do they have a surprise for you. It's Slack. It's Microsoft mm -hmm. Slack. Um, <laughs> the executive director at the Linux Foundation says 2019 has been another incredible year. Microsoft Teams for Linux. With this announcement, Microsoft is bringing its hub. This is the first tech air office app for Linux. To Linux, I'm thrilled to see Microsoft's recognition of how companies, educational institutes, are using Linux to transform their work culture. Man, no one uses Teams because they want to, so you might want to back up on that a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pedro, you've logged into it. It does work, right? Yep, it does. Uh, since we do, um, well, there's a push at work to start using Teams because uh, Skype for Business is going away, so... Mm. Everything that Skype for Business does now is going to be handled through t uh, Teams. Uh, so I launched it, put in my work credentials, and yeah, everything I tried, I didn't actually try the calls, but um, everything like the embedded um, Word and Excel for web, those all work just fine. You can browse through all the content. You can see everything. Uh, OneNote works. It syncs with everything that you have on there. Uh, you can pull your files from uh, OneDrive. It's all there. Everything I tested was, in fact, working. I mean, it's an Electron mm. app. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> Microsoft finds yeah. a way, baby. Jill, you're the, <laughs> no. number, you're the Microsoft fan here on the show, so... <laughs> no, <that>? but <laughs> I do have to say, this is huge. This is a really big deal. And, you know, it goes a long way for Linux adoption and businesses that use Microsoft apps exclusively. And, you know, this is also huge because it's the first step in Microsoft releasing their whole Office 365 suite of apps for Linux. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd like Adobe to do that as well. <laughs> and um, who would have thought that the cure for Microsoft would come from, well, Microsoft. So you don't have to use someone else's apps to use Microsoft, uh, you know, file extensions. And <laughs> so this this is actually a big deal. <laughs> it is interesting that yeah. I, yesterday on Twitter, when they made this announcement, <laughs> I saw a bunch of people's like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? It's like, yeah, strange times, these. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, when this such is the way of transitioning into a services company, uh, we we've seen this playbook. Uh, yeah. This little company you might have heard of called IBM. Um, <laughs> they kind of didn't, you know, they moved into a services system and Microsoft's doing the thing. And, you know, you're going to see web apps. You're going to see uh, desktop. You're going to be able to get you some desktop. Oh, I want to rent some Microsoft desktop. This is coming. Yeah. This is going. You're going to yeah. pay for access to the Windows desktop that'll give you access to the Windows apps. <laughs> well, you got that. I mean, you're looking like uh, we're old and we're stuck in our ways. I mean, you got to understand that, you know, every company now <laughs> wants to sell you a service. You know, Adobe is huge on that. You know, Yeah. They're like, hey, man, no, you get the creative suite or whatever it's called for X amount of monies per month or whatever per year and no refunds, by the way. And that... Mm -hmm. That's just going to be plowing forward because yeah. you can sell that as a value proposition to a student be like, okay, you don't have to spend a gang of money, but give us some coin every month, affordable amount, yep. and you can use everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of sad mm -hmm. about that. But, <laughs> hey, yeah. if you want to cheer us up, head over to LinuxGameCast.com <laughs> and smash that donate button, fam. Um, we got a lot of you <laughs> that do. <laughs> Uh, we got a gang Money of does buy happiness around here. It <laughs> absolutely and friendship and love and penguins. Delicious, delicious <laughs> pig. Wait, we don't eat them anymore. Um we have Patreon, we have LibraPay, we have merchandise. Speaking of merchandise, what do we have? Uh do we have the thing too? 
Ah, there it is. Look at this. Yeah. Shilling. <laughs> Shilling. We have uh, mm-hmm. Genghis shirts up to and including the Use Me Penguin t-shirt and the limited edition, which is genuinely that goes on for uh, Santa time. Is that what people yeah. call it? I don't keep track of holidays. Really, but... <laughs> oh, Santa. Yeah. And here's the old one from last year, yeah. the experimental one that we had to to stop selling because it was yeah. misprinted. A little bit jank. It's but awesome. it is a collector's item. That's what it told Jill and she didn't refund it. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool if you want to wear some of our merch. Uh, we got a gang. The best way to do it is Patreon. We have a new Patreon this week. You get your name into credits. You get a custom RSS feed if you like what we do, all of our specials mm-hmm. and our pre shows that don't go out for the public that you can hop into an hour early, especially on Saturdays. And you get the uncut versions of you know, five days early, not a full week, but five days. Uh, oh, and um, I'm about to do another thing in my podcasting series. I have that. For the people nice. supporting us, that's how we pay the bills here. But I like to throw a little extra, and this one's going to be covering Mix Minus. So you'll be able to talk over mm. your guest or your co host like we do. That's the best way to do things. But who's that new <laughs> beautiful patriot we have helping us out and joining this team? Jill. Yeah, Mix. his name is Carl. And Carl. Um, I, I do know a few Carls, but I don't know if I know this one. So, but thank you. So much, That's Carl. I thought you said um, you knew all Carls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Carl. Yeah. Carl. I, I'm looking over your CV right here. It says I know all Carls. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, Carl's stomach was definitely making the rumblies. <laughs> yeah. Price was baby's head. Um, <laughs> keep being awesome. Keep being beautiful. Uh, everyone that's subscribing to us on Twitch and however that works, that's cool too. We are here five days a week mm-hmm. at your pleasure. And uh, what do we got? Wish mm-hmm. zones. If you're curious about anything in the studio, yeah. go to our web zone, <laughs> go to the about section. Everything that is stuck together for the streaming uh, thing that we put together is there. So if you want to part that out, we do have a wish zone. Pedro's got one. Uh, mm-hmm. I have one for the studio. Jill's got one. Jordan's got one. If you want to make our holidays full of Aww. stuff, yeah. <laughs> support rampant consumerism. That's what we're trying Aww. to do. Here on our open That's what we're all about yeah, here yeah. anyway. So, yes. <laughs> okay, let's get into a slice of pie. Ooh, pie. Ooh. It's a very tall pie this time around. Well, it's yeah. just the one uh, story about uh, pie, but uh, this one is it's the NAS pie. It's... Um, well, you've probably heard of the hats that support um, multiple, um, well, they support multiple setup um, drives all at once. And you just mount that on top of the Pi and then you have to sort of come out with your own configuration as to how you're going to lay out the drives. You can just have them out in the open like uh, they show in the pictures there. Alex, I'll or... put 200 on, on top of each other. Yes. <laughs> I mean, unless you're going to you make like have... an H or like... Make a little card Yeah, house. you could have uh, actual hard drives all vibrating on top of one another. It sounds yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is, um, it's all very well and good. But if you'd like an enclosure, like, uh, say, let's call it a NAS enclosure, you could get yourself one for a measly, measly 100 pounds. And it's about uh, half the height of a uh, bottle of Coke there. And it'll house um, four um, two and a half inch uh, hard drives uh, hanging from as if they were like on a clothes rack. Um, here's, here's, the problem. It, here's the problem with that. Because everybody that's watching the video version was like, what? And they looked at it and they're like, that's not bad looking. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's not bad looking. No, <laughs> yeah. no, it, it's pricey, but it, yeah, it's it's it doesn't look terrible at all. And uh, you can see like the extra USB ports on the uh, on the hat on top of the Raspberry Pi default. You port. could see the decided lack of the hole at the top for the fan. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. It could use some vents around the top for the just fan. a couple. <laughs> no, no, you, you you have to bring up spinning hard drives to optimal temperature of burning before you could. Okay. Maybe with the SSDs you could get around to it since they all, uh, if you've ever actually paid attention to the temperature readout on an SSD, they all get to like between 30 and 40 and that's Mm -hmm. where they stay. So if it's SSDs, you're good. If they're hard drives, 
Yeah. There's that better cooling. be good drives. <laughs> One thing I yeah. looked at that, man, well, if, if you have them to spin down, because that's, that's a toit, toit enclosure. And the way that you're just sitting with the board, and you think about if you go, most of you are listening, it's four, you know, spinning this stack vertically. Yep. Mm-hmm. And sandwiched together very tightly. Tightly. But yeah. it it's like a, if you just put a little, uh, like, baby mac and, you know, like, back case on it and didn't have cheese grater holes in it but it looks mm-hmm. really good i like it even at 99 bucks i'm like eh but that that's especially without any ventilation for the um fan head at the top that's just a quick way to kill hard drives mm-hmm. yes yes it is yeah, that's it is, why actually. like a vent on the top <laughs> plastic there and even if it didn't have a fan just actually using the heat convection to like pull air, fresh air in from the bottom because there are some vents at the bottom mm-hmm. there's like mm-hmm. those cuts at the bottom yeah but yeah it needs a way for the air to get out in the top that, yeah. that that's not how thermodynamics Heat rises <laughs> it, i mean hot air rises right not according yeah. to them <laughs> 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 yeah clearly Aww. so well i thought this the was cool because it's to drill some cooling you know, holes into them or drive Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Do it. <laughs> no. Put a racing screen. Right through the PCB, too. No. <laughs> well, I was impressed with this uh, project. For one, uh, price. Uh, network attached storage systems are actually quite expensive. <laughs> and, you know, you could go for the Drobos, which are uh, several hundred dollars to a thousand. <laughs> yes. And this is, Speaking this, of expensive, this, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is your cheapest option. You know, make your own Raspberry Pi version. You don't even have to buy their case or anything. Just do it yourself. And I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> even with the Pi Hat, you would be looking at a maximum sustained uh, transfer of about 400 megs on that. So mm-hmm. this, this is yep. nothing you'd want for anything that you need in a hurry. In a hurry, yeah. <laughs> no. And yeah, it is uh, 100 uh, it's a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds if you're over here, um, but you do get like the enclosure and the hat and everything else, just not the Raspberry Pi four. Mm. So it Thank is it, it's not you know completely egregious, but it is a bit pricey for a Raspberry yeah. Pi enclosure. <laughs> well, Pedro, what if we're at the end of the show and I'm done screaming at my monitor or my pod playing <laughs> device, and I want to tell you the right way to do something that you said was that was wrong during the episode? <laughs> well, uh, you could uh, smoke signal? take. Yes, you could make some smoke signals. Yeah. Uh, you can use your oven if you don't have like a place that you can start a fire. You can use the oven; it's fine. Um, no promises that I'll see that. But hey, if you'd like to make sure that I do see that, you can go to LinuxCamecast.com, hit the contact button, and fill out the form. The show that you want to send your feedback to, so it shows up here on Wednesday, is LWDW. So make sure you pick uh, that. Uh, that's it. Let us know about your Pi projects, about your anything that you've been doing that's even tangentially related to Linux. Uh, if you do have some quarrels about something that we may have raised during the show, mm-hmm. that's fair game. This is how you, you can learn. also send mm-hmm. some hate mail for Saturday. If, like. <laughs> if you get something wrong, that, that's definitely yeah. a thing. Um, I'm always like that. I always try to balance it. Up. Like you got something wrong, mm-hmm. on, you know that XKCD, but. Yes. Hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it's real. It is real. Uh, Mike G. Uh, is talking about lead hacks. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Kali Linux has an undercover Windows 10 mode. Your coworkers will never suspect. Mr. Robot approves. Show 199 and counting. It seems like only yesterday. And Pedro, I'm pleased to help sponsor your mayhem anytime. Thanks for another great show, Mike G. <laughs> Aww. Still Thank here. you, Mike G. <laughs> Still yes. waiting for um, the fine, fine folks behind CKB next to figure out yeah. what exactly is going on with the firmware in this mouse. The mouse. Because, yeah, yeah it's not um, straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. We love Mike G. Hey man, that's cool. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I hope hopefully before the eventual heat death of the universe, or maybe you'll check next time before putting something on your wish list and doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on my wish list because I wasn't expecting anyone to buy anything from it. It's like I put it there. It's like okay, okay. You since see, CKB Mike, next is Mike, a thing, Mike, you're doing the flying spaghetti <laughs> monsters work. You've taught the boy a lesson. Ah uh, yes, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. 
That's kind of brilliant. I figured sooner or later that's going to work, so I put it there, and I would pick it up eventually. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> no, I don't have to. <laughs> I'm next. Um, we're talking about the droops. Uh, K1 Linux cast writes, wait, I was talking about this last week, man. We're talking about WordPress. Yeah, with Farm OS. Drupal, yeah. It's like people mm-hmm. pay to have Drupal sites converted to WordPress? Question mark, exclamation point. Mm-hmm. This is how you know they mean business. Um, <laughs> I've been working with Drupal sites since 6.x and found WordPress to be more of a pain with regard to customization. So I've never spent enough time using it. What about it do you prefer over Drupal? Another great show, LGC. Looking forward to 200. Guess what? 200. Yay. Um, Yay. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> The common case, this is, we're, A, we're talking like mid 2000s, like 2006 onward, um, which is not something I deal with anymore. But I would normally run into somebody who just got suckered into a Drupal site, not realizing, like, you need somebody to maintain this, or even better, they would have like a headless install or something like that. Mm. No idea. Everything was out of date. All the plugins are like, how do I maintain this manually? Because at the time you did. However, this little upstart thing called WordPress uh, did, you know, basic end user things like check against a central repository for plugin updates and stuff that I like, okay, man, let me get you over here. Let me get you up to speed and you can check this every day and you can have one person take care of it. Also, I made a script to convert everything over from the back end. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with Drupal. Uh, it is very customizable. It, but I mean, you can use what it, like, now it really doesn't matter, Pedro. Mm-mm. I'm forced to agree with FX Boy because, uh, mm-hmm. as he mentions in, um, in on the Twitch <laughs> chat, hell described in one word, Joomla. <laughs> Joomla. <laughs> and as soon as I read that, I started reliving like the three websites that I made with Joomla because people wanted uh. to use Joomla. So yeah, we'll use Joomla. It's like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll take it. press any day. <laughs> I don't know, man. I s- yeah. started out with my uh, CMS hacking with PHP Nuke. So everything after that is like, this is Legos. Um, <laughs> I got it. I'm not worried about it. But mm-hmm. then again, we don't do anything terribly advanced. Uh, that that's all the web dev stuff I do these days. Of like, oh, I could open WordPress and install mm. a theme. Um, yes, <laughs> I, I installed yeah. it because very well. Kudos, seriously, major kudos to WordPress. They actually made all of the CMS management, uh, mm-hmm. even the stuff that gets close to the back end. They made it very, very easy. Very easy. And, you know, I went from Drupal to WordPress as well. And I really love the the theming and how easy it was to configure all that. But the new version, you know, I haven't used Drupal in so many years. And I, it it's up to par now. So <laughs> it's, just use what you like. <laughs> the, um, there's some good tools in WordPress for like stuff that we have to deal with, which is basically content management and dealing with caching servers with Amazon and Cloudflare and how that's rolled out. Mm-hmm. which is really easy to use with WordPress. There's probably similar tools these days. So yeah, there's that. It's kind of brilliant, but I think we got to get out of here and roll some credits. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. How's that for 200? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> nope. Wrong one. Wrong one. <laughs> False alarm. There we go. Happy 200. Ho, ho, ho. Yay. Happy 200th LWDW. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> Vince Seriously, Stone, Pedro Mateus. Yeah. And the Thank you. T- Aww. <laughs> Thank you to all our patrons for making the 200th episode possible. <laughs> to our executive producers and our producers, we love you all. And the fine <laughs> upstanding cannibals. Don't you worry. Uh, you can still buy something to injure Ven, and that'll just put the um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll put some pressing need on Ven to actually get uh, the fine upstanding cannibal wall 3.0 together. <laughs> Aww! <laughs> Yay! Two hundred. That's that's amazing. That's, that's just wow. <laughs> Two hundred, yay! (laughs) (laughs) 
Let's see, 200. Mm -hmm. All right, 208. All right, 208. It'll be four years of LWDW. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eight more weeks. <laughs> I'm not tired. <laughs> it's my brain. You, you switch a show for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the fun basil. show. Yeah, just missed it. <laughs> By that much. <laughs> so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of eight weeks, I'm actually going to be uh, going to Portugal on the 5th of January, and I'll be there till... It's going to be two weeks. So I'm going on the 5th, coming back on the 18th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there will be um, one, two, three LGC weeklies and um, one, two LWDWs that uh, I'll need um, to find replacement hosts. If anyone um, would like to volunteer for the um, rolling cast, let me know. Otherwise, I'll be poking people at some point. <laughs> Mm. And I will have one one day, probably New Year's Day, because the the show falls on Christmas morning, and for me, and New Year's Day, and the New Year's Day one may be the one I I won't be able to be here for. It'll be the first time I'm never on. I haven't been on LWW. That'll be weird. <laughs> yeah, for like everyone else's holidays, I'll be here. It's just those two okay. weeks in January that I'm not. So <laughs> that'll work out really good, Pedro. So I can fill in for yeah. you and. Yeah, that'll work out. Good. Oh, good. We have we a Jill volunteer for uh, <laughs> Wednesday. Yes, uh, for uh, <laughs> Saturday in this case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't know if do you want to do um, just you and Jill for um, I, 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 those two I, I weeks of LWDW? I still process that you bail for two weeks every year. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> no, no, no. All I'm thinking about is uh, Jordan and Finland on LTE. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, if I, you know, was going there for work and I could have, like, any kind of actual free time, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, it's going to be there. Go. It's going to be family BS and having to visit everyone and having to go yeah. here and having to go there. It's like... No. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. My my, who I I love. My mother-in-law is coming in town. She's my only parent, real parent left, and she. Uh, but she's also turning eighty, so we're gonna have a big birthday party for her um, on January first in San Diego. So <laughs> that'll be good. But Christmas morning, I should be fine. <laughs> And then, yeah, la la yeah, Pedro, like last year, I'll fill in for at least one of the LGC weeklies for you. And, yeah, um, and I'll ask um, the rotating cast of um, suckers, I mean, uh, people. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> everyone always seems to be um, very happy to see MT and Foxy. Yeah. And I'll even ask Sandy if he's up for it, if he wants to do it. <laughs> that would be awesome. We haven't had Sandman on forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sandman's on Thursdays. Yeah. <laughs> we can see what we can work out. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What else do we have going on? Came very close mm -hmm. to buying one of those um, C64s, like the new improved versions that they put out that actually have a working oh. keyboard. Wow. Oh, but cool. the moment I went to Amazon, it's like, it's sold out, and we don't know when or if it'll ever be back in stock. It's like, uh, wait then. <laughs> Just jump out in front of a bus, it'd be quicker, Chibs. <laughs> 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 oh 
<laughs> oh my goodness, Chipsy, wow. Bacon beer cheese dip. You, you wouldn't like it. It doesn't have enough sugar in it. <laughs> <laughs> it probably does. <laughs> it, oh, it probably has a crap ton of sugar. <laughs> it, it's either going to be sugar or salt. That's like the... Yeah, salt. <laughs> or both. Or both. Because, well, beer has sugar in it, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah this one all right let me get something to drink oh that's and commodore os it's like this that. one Yeah, I remember when Project Cars 2 was going to be on Linux since, you know, they didn't deliver on the first one, so the second one would totally be on Linux, you guys. <gasps> Screw <laughs> you. <laughs> but yeah, no, I want one of those um, C64s. They were, um, they were listed for £100 on Amazon. It's like, yep, that's my Christmas gift for myself. Don't care. I'm gonna buy one out of stock all right we shall wait mm. <laughs> seriously retro games biz give me a call please <laughs> <laughs> i have very That's destructive so cool. ideas on what to do with that particular case if assuming the keyboard is using just you know standard usb connection even if it's to an internal header I can make things. I can make things. I have access to a Dremel. Alright? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Member. Okay. <laughs> it's been a while since I typed that in. Uh, same. Okay. Strider, <laughs> your bot's broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> S-Fire ported games to Linux. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, it, I was going to turn it into a dedicated uh, emulation machine. Yes, Strider, that was the point. With an actual mm -hmm. x86 uh, AMD APU in it. Yeah, oh, I, I do remember the, uh, those. Yeah, yeah, that had mm -hmm. the i5s and the i7s in them. Those were stupidly yes. expensive. <laughs> yeah, it was like a thousand dollars, I think, just to start with. for the yeah. i5 version. Yeah, yeah, but those were cool. They're still around, yeah, I, but I remember uh, when they first announced them. It's like, ooh, there's one with an i7. That's fourteen hundred euros. Nope. <laughs> Oh, Chipsy. There's the LCD. Yeah, get a mosaic going with a few of those, and you might have what Ven needs. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Probably the non glare ones. Since there will be lights shining on Ven, and if it's a reflective one, that might not work too well. <laughs> <laughs> like his, 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 Steven's like, Ven needs to get non-glare glass for his posters. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what we use on all our, our paintings. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it is expensive, but... <laughs> Yeah, knowing Ven, that's probably like, um, Out of, let's yeah. see, which frame is cheap? That one. We'll, we'll yeah. go with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Microfiber cloth, just don't put yes. it in the wash with um, fabric conditioner. It won't work too well. <laughs> No, don't. 
Don't use fabric conditioner when you're washing your LCD panels. That's a bad idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then if you scroll up a little bit, Chibsy uh, uh, took pictures of the screens that he was thinking about for you. They're lightweight, and you do a mosaic of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the offer, Jibs. <laughs> I like the idea, but mm. that's a lot of parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it would take a few. <laughs> then running the cables from all yeah. of them. Well, it's that building the enclosure, then you're still going to have green gap between the two unless they smack them. And then it's mounting that, whatever that's going to end up weighing with like mm. 15 or 20 of those. Mm. Then it's what's going to be driving it, what's going to be powering what's driving it. And yeah, kind of trying to avoid the project part. <laughs> My idea of the project is like some screws, maybe plug it in. Hmm. Has there really been no one that's managed to, like, hack around some drivers for the available LEDs displays? I felt a, there was a bunch of, like, what Chib, Chibs is laying down, like, multi-panel stuff. Yeah. Project stuff. I did, well, I went, there's, like, a, um... Of course, there is this site that has, like, you know, all the Linux drivers and stuff like that, and what's approved, like, has drivers for, like, LCD panels and LED, more importantly, LED panels, because I don't really mm -hmm. want to do something with, like, a backlight. Yeah. Um, just because that's not going to show up good on the camera. We want to go for light emitting diodes. Yeah. Hmm. Either that, or we just, you know, <laughs> get a piece of glass with some LEDs behind it and draw on it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're inexpensive, <laughs> so that, that's markers. a nice option. A fluorescent, uh, yeah, fluorescent ink, and then shine some UV light on it. There, done. Look, look it's healthier. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Yeah, I remember when those came out and all the all the restaurants were replacing their chalkboards, you know, with these. And they're they're great. I think they're nice to look at. Let's see what it Colorful. Looks like. It's okay. The, the overexposure mm -hmm. to the UV light is fine. It's mm -hmm. not going to give you cancer or anything. Yeah, <laughs> that better not have UV light. I don't like UV light. That's probably just that black light. <laughs> see, that looks sufficiently annoying. Because <laughs> I always have to balance this with like it's gonna piss me off a little bit, right? And it's like, yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that looks like a laptop screen inverter connected to <laughs> yeah. an adapter yeah. for the outs. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Plus the uh extra PCB with the buttons for the OSDs. Yep. Yep. <laughs> What's a Gak in Voldai? Sounds naughty. <laughs> Hello, Brother Jelly Bean. See, I'm not the only one. Oh, Techmoon's <laughs> got a thing called What in the World? <laughs> I don't want to take his video. Let's see. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, mm. it's a projector, right? Why don't we just have the lined up standing couch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just hang a couch on your wall. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, um, so the um, the names of the people into <laughs> the cushions, <laughs> yeah. Embroidered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man. I'm sure to keep it simple. Uh, that's what Steve's up to. Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh, cool, Boo. You got the little... Nice. <laughs> I guess that's a explosive charge on the harpoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks mm -hmm. proper um, goofy. <laughs> yes. Hey, man, he wanted to make... Steve doesn't believe in fluid dynamics, therefore it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, explosive harpoons. Hey man, that was a valid strat back in the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the harpoon stuck. Alright, blow the charge. Boom. <laughs> Hopefully in that order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, shooting the harpoon jostled the charge and it exploded. It took half our sub with it. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, FX boy, yeah, whalers still use them. It's unfortunate, but yes, they do. Uh. Oh. Yeah, Japan may be ahead of... Um when it comes to some bits of technology, but they're still a bit backwards in some things. Yes. And no, just because they're called sperm whales, they don't make you more fertile. Please stop yeah. killing them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even believe whale meat is all that delicious. Apparently the fat is great as, like, um, an inert base for any kind of solution that you want to be goopy. <laughs> yeah. That's what I look for in my inertness. Goopy. <laughs> Just how goopy it Just is. knock it off the table. It's like, this is not goopy. <laughs> Yeah, did Steve? Didn't, didn't they quickly uh, figure out that hanging chains off the side of ships was like, okay, now we're gonna do this now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I could misremember that. I'm not sure. <laughs> this success. He's he's typing on his phone, so gotta give him some time. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steve's hungry. He's starting to eat letters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give people any crap about typos. I wiki them. <laughs> Seriously, Discord. For Linux. Mm -hmm. Where's the Red Squiggly? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We know that Chrome can do the red squiggly on Linux. Come on. <laughs> nope. You're just being ungrateful. Aw. You are very special, Steve Husband. You're my Steve Husband. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Gonna leave that one alone. It's Wednesday. Not gonna touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Very special. Yes, 
jelly bean. Very special indeed. Isn't that just so very special? <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> there we go. That was a good movie, by the way. Criminally <laughs> underrated. Not another teen movie. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> At uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America. Was it? <laughs> so it was a vacuum cleaner. That's not a euphemism. It was a vacuum cleaner. Like <laughs> it's been a while. I saw that movie in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should mention that. That's I've been worried if you'd seen it in the eighties. Wait a minute. <laughs> yes, but it's like, yeah, I've watched it since then. It's like you Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you haven't seen it, go watch the uh first episode of uh Harley Quinn, Medicine Woman. Oh yeah, you sounded like you really enjoyed that, Ben. That was yeah. unhinged. Mm. <laughs> That's a bit different. I your kids. Proper um, the Harley Quinn show needs to be a little bit unhinged. I'm saying the first 45 seconds sets the tone pretty hard, man. <laughs> mm. at, at, after that first 45 seconds, it's like, damn. All right. I think it's like the juxtaposition. Uh, I was going for that big word. Juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. Yes. Yeah. Well, you almost had it. Juxtaposition <laughs> doesn't work. Position. Um, of the characters saying what they're saying doing what they're doing and like this thing's a hard r okay <laughs> there's no like oh the batman at which one the killing joke it's like that was rated r that's rated g compared to this <laughs> first 45 seconds you know exactly what you're into i'm a strong hand <laughs> Uh, that movie made me feel uncomfortable. Mm. Not because of the actual movie itself, but because everyone else I was with started looking at me. It's like, mm -hmm. screw you guys, seriously. <laughs> I would have been worn out that night from rubbing people. <laughs> Goblin King. I've never watched any of the actual scary movies. No, me neither. I think I've seen all yeah. but the last two. <laughs> I haven't seen any Saw movies, like, all the way. I know I've seen, like, a bit of one, like, halfway through mm. it was playing. And I was like, ah, oh, that's the little tricycle dude. He's cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've only seen the first I saw, one saw when I was little. one, two, <laughs> and three. Mm. I mean, torture porn's its own subgenre of horror movies, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't even think against it. It's not something I'm sitting like, okay. Because <laughs> you can't enjoy it. You're like, I can come up with something better than that. Um, <laughs> uh. I think most of it is like the contrivance to actually make all of those plot elements m mesh. Mm. <laughs> that That's, yeah, that I got catharsis out of the Saw movies because it's like, yeah, that'll never happen. <laughs> That plot, oh man, the Devil May Cry 5, you should have been called, you play as everyone, the game. <laughs> because plot mm. threads of, oh, mm. at one point I genuinely said, am I about to play this, the motorcycle? Yeah. It's pretty deep in the game before it's just like, yeah, you have to go through everybody's story. Nope, no option. Just do it. Deal with it. I remember when it came out, um, saw a couple of people talking about the game, like first impressions type of thing. It's like, yeah, you play as all the characters and uh, Nero and Dante are all very well and good. But then you have to play Kane dude with the summons like V. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a get it game. Mm -hmm. could, could it be more emo? Moby? I called him Kylo Ren. That's what he reminded me of. <laughs> I mean, he did. <laughs> but a bunch of spoilers. The game played all the way through. Didn't have a single spite crash after I installed the Microsoft Fist. Mm. So, there's that. Very, very... Microsoft G-Streamer. <laughs> Never was called, no. Um, made a video about it. Don't remember it. Blocked it out of my memory. <laughs> That's why there's a yeah, video. It's basically, it's like, How did I do find that? the cab version that has the install SH script. <laughs> That's the MF uh, version you want to be using for that game. <laughs> so, that was pretty cool. We got a fun game this week. It's Hipster. It's Pixel. Cool. And it's platformer. <laughs> then for the hate mail, we'll have Pedro arguing with game devs. We'll have that segment. It's been a while. <laughs> I wasn't arguing. If anything, I was agreeing. <laughs> don't don't sp try to build a teaser up, son. And yes, you were arguing. <laughs> I love it, man. They're just like, well, I was a professional game critic. He didn't really say that. No, I didn't. <laughs> I did. Um, just made it look like Pedro. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, with what they said, it's like, oh, all of a sudden I'm in possession of more information that you didn't provide in the game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the link to Shotbot. Mm. Wow. Oh yes, vote for show titles we have If show you'd titles? like <laughs> I'll vote for mm. the one I suggested That's probably going to be the one I use <laughs> That's neat, weirdo Noise is not noise <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Pain in the PIA Sentimental <laughs> Pedro and Pedro <laughs> Yeah, sentimental <laughs> Twenty-three hours ago. Oh, you must have had one yesterday. <laughs> ah, yes. I'm gonna take your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bit there that I was all about the helmets. It's like, okay, these are all ordinators. Someone's gonna have a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him like some. I mean, I guess, I think people, it seems like everyone who's really digging that has like the uh, nostalgia glasses on. They're like, I remember this part. If you've never touched it, I didn't touch the Elder Scrolls series until Skyrim. I and mean, even then, I, I was very cautious. Like, this is not my type of game. Skyrim's every, everyone's type of game. You just haven't played it yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Fallout 76, man. People still play that? Ah. Uh. That is Bethesda in a tweet. Yeah. It's <laughs> so cute. And he's like, oh, it's charming. Bethesda. Not really. There was a bug yeah. in Fallout 3, um, one of the earlier versions, that if you quick save the game as you were walking, when you reloaded um, into that quick save, you couldn't move. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, there was a similar one if you quick saved while you were shooting. When you uh, quick loaded, you would be always shooting. You, it, it would basically, until you ran out of ammo, it's like always shooting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. It is 450. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'm just providing the time. You can do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the equivalent of opening up a terminal and typing date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I normally keep the time hidden on the desktop because then I'm being like, it's 3.45 in the morning. What do you do? I'm working on something. Quit reminding me, clock. <laughs> Get on my way. Hey, thanks for the ghost. I don't know, man. 
If somebody gives me something for a console, I have to give it to somebody I know with a console. Uh, yeah, Dave's been um, saying mm -hmm. that once he gets um, his, one of his PS4s free, he'll give it to me as one a of them? payment. What is this the, um, doing with all these PS4s, man? Sounds suspicious. Because you should probably yeah, report He it. had a regular PS4 and a PS4 Pro because he used to be a console gamer. But now he's back on the uh, the PC. Sounds like he's console gaming it up pretty hard if he's still got two. Well, uh, he's getting rid of them because I gave him the um, the motherboard and the FX8370 and the 16 gigs of RAM that it had. And it's like, yeah, that's all working. So you can have one of my PS4s if you want. It's like, I do want to play Bloodborne. Which so yes, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dark Souls, but PS4 exclusive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the one game. So yeah, if I could have the PS4 for free. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, that console life of like everything's 60 bucks or 60 pounds. Regional yeah. pricing. F you. It's Bloodborne. Every now and then they give it away in the PS4 uh, store because that's how long mm -hmm. it's been there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how long until we get a PS4 emulator? That's really good. The the part of the PS4 Linux project was actually getting a dump of the operating system, and they did get that. Mm -hmm. So, should just be a matter of time. <laughs> How much time? Six months. <laughs> that's that's unlikely. <laughs> yeah. When you look at the um, awesome, awesome work being done with the PlayStation 3 emulation, you're like, it's still got a little ways to go. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> they made a lot of headway with uh, with Vulcan. Because as, as soon as they introduced Vulcan, it's like, oh, everything's running much better now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it is the future. It is. Right. I got to make a show. Mm -hmm. We gotta do that thing. <laughs> yeah, DX12 is awesome. It's great. <laughs> Teaches people that Vulcan's better. <laughs> That's the thing. DX12 teaches people nothing. It teaches people that, yes, um, Visual Studio will code your game for you if you let it. Well, it teaches people that they can write a lot of boilerplate Oh, a game studio anyway, and they're like, and I'd like to put this on the Switch. Oh, what? Nope. Can't, oh, can I put it on the PS? No? Hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I can put it on the, <laughs> the one, wait, is the Windows more even a thing? I think they got rid of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right, that's beautiful. Look, we even snuck in a little Microsoft hate at the end. It was hot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, we'll be back uh, Thursday. I'm not 100%. I know they're doing the Game Awards. Might stream some of that with some color commentary. I'm not sure. We'll find out mm. whether or not Jordan's up to anything hard planned. So stay yeah. tuned. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. We love you. <laughs> <laughs>